uh, low internet, hello YouTube. Uh, this is a quick video I've been meaning to do for a while. Uh, I put this thing together last summer. Uh, currently it is November 2020. Uh, I got this thing going uh, in the spring of this year with um, lithium ion batteries. Uh, that uh, the original batteries, they, uh, they're done, you know? And I acquired uh, these uh, A123 cells from BAE Systems, I think. Uh, they came out of a TTC hybrid bus, uh, and I got the, the sarcophagus of, of these things uh, out of that bus at a scrapyard for a very good price. Uh, not just the batteries, but a whole bunch of connectors uh, and wiring as well, and contactors and good stuff. So essentially, I upgraded this golf cart uh, to be lithium ion for the price of scrap. Uh, and I'm in it today to do a retrofit for a heating system. Not very many people fully understand lithium ion batteries. I'm uh, not perfect either. Uh, but as far as I do understand, these cells work just fine uh, below freezing temperatures. Uh, however, uh, also to my understanding, which is not in the data sheet either, is that if you charge them below freezing, you can damage them. They'll discharge just fine. Like, that's what they mean by operating. If they're charged up in above freezing environment and then drop them down to uh, 20 to below freezing, uh, they'll be just fine. Uh, but uh, as soon as that passes that threshold of, of zero degrees Celsius, you're asking for trouble. So what I'm doing today is uh, I'm installing some thermostats, uh, one for the internal battery pack and one for the rear battery pack. I've just crammed batteries anywhere I could on this because they're so much lighter than those boat anchors. Um, so I have a temperature sensor in there and a temperature sensor in there. Ideally, I would like to have one in here as well. This is what it looks like when it's all covered up and buttoned down. I'm gonna be adding more insulation as well and covering uh, off the uh, the bottom floor panels to prevent snow from getting in there and I have a heating pad in there and I'll be adding heating pads up here as well but while I still have daylight I was going to do a quick video uh, and kind of highlight what's going on in here so um, this thing here is a watertight uh, DC to DC converter this uh, is the main relay to control the charging circuit and that's the the main brains of the BMS uh, these things are available from AliExpress and they are really good at monitoring the cell voltages, individual cell voltages. Uh, I had a really hard time finding anything that could do this. All I really want to do is monitor the cell voltage and output a signal if any one cell is out of, uh, out of spec uh, by a specific amount, which I've, I've set up on these things. Unfortunately for these, the uh, input biases uh, are not isolated which so I've, uh, underneath I've added an isolated power supply and they're not like you would expect in that you'd think that um, a high impedance input wouldn't really have any impedance, but they do. And the other enraging thing is that every input has slightly different impedance. So over time, it'll it actually create an imbalance in the battery pack. Uh, but this, for a battery pack this size, I'm thinking that would take years. Uh, but nonetheless, I do have an active battery balancer down here connected directly to the cells, uh, which is on all the time. And those LEDs turn on when there's an imbalance. Uh, and then uh, they redistribute the energy to kind of maintain that balance. So this pack here uh, at the back is representative of the whole thing. It's uh, a 48 volt system. That's uh, six, eight volt uh, cells. But I did some tests when it's doing its uh, equalization charge on those. Uh, it goes over 60 volts. Uh, and at which point the controller and, and the motor cut out. Like you, even though uh, this is one of the things I also installed, I don't know why these things don't have it. This voltmeter is telling me what the battery pack voltage is. I installed that while I still had the lead acid pack. 59 volts, no problem. I could turn the key and start driving, even though it's plugged in. Never mind that. But the point is, as soon as it hits 60, it has this over voltage cut off. So, okay, great. So all I need to know is I can size a battery pack that it, when it's at, at its maximum charge, it's below 60 volts and it'll run just fine. Uh, and it does, it gr runs great. This has a lot more oomph to it with a loss of weight uh, and more amperage available. Like there's no sag, uh, much less sag on these. Like when the sags, it's still way over 48 volts 
versus those sad sorry things. Um, okay, anyways, so uh, where was I? Uh, that's right, so um, it's charging right now, uh, and that's kind of the, part of the important thing uh, about about having a BMS, is that if you overcharge lithium-ion battery packs, you're asking for trouble. Um, so this, uh, this will monitor that cell voltage as soon as there's a cutout, like a, as soon as any one cell reaches the voltage I specified, uh, even though the maximum for these is 3.6 volts, I stop it at like 3.5 or something like that, I don't remember, but it outputs a signal and uh, turns off, off the charger. So what I've done, as just to keep things simple, I know there's easier ways of doing this. You press this button, that light turns on. What that does is it latches a relay and a, it connects the charger to the battery pack. And then that relay is then interrupted by a signal from the BMS, which then opens the relay back up again. And that, that's it, no more charging. As soon as any one cell breathes against that, that voltage, there's no way this can ever overcharge. Um, and uh, the other thing that's kind of interesting, that charger, even though it's fully programmable, of course, these ass clowns keep stuff proprietary. Uh, I can reprogram it, but I don't, I, I don't have access to create the algorithm to change this to a constant voltage, constant current. Uh, so what I've had to do is just kind of as a workaround, it's doing its bulk charge now, and when it goes it, to get these fully charged, it needs to go to the equalization stage, and then it cuts out on its own after some time, even though they may not be fully charged yet. So what I've done as a bypass, I have this timer circuit in here. So uh, in in 87 minutes, it's kind of hard to see that, but whatever. Just trust me. 87 minutes, it'll turn off the main relay to disconnect the charger, even though the 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 signal relay is still latched, saying charge enable is okay. It'll disconnect this for about a minute or two minutes. Uh, uh, I think that's the blue number one there. It disconnects for a minute and then reconnects it again, starts the countdown all over. And so that fakes out the charger to think that you've unplugged it and plugged it into a different golf cart. And then it starts charging again. Uh, and then it'll go into its equalization stage again. And then it'll keep doing that until the latch, the signal latch opens up and shuts it off for good until someone comes along and presses that button again, uh, which in the middle of the night, that doesn't happen. Um, so the thing that I've added today is because discharging is totally fine, charging is a problem when below freezing. So I have these thermostats here. What they do is that they will interrupt the signal in the same kind of way that this, this timer interrupts the signal. But when the heat is turned on, meaning that when the uh, temperature of the battery pack drops below, I've set 4 degrees Celsius or 39.2 Fahrenheit, um, it will uh, turn disable the charger. Uh, it'll just disconnect the charger, and but at the same time, it'll turn on the heat. And the heat is going to be done by the wall power. I know I could have done it from the battery power and could have had it heated all the time. This is just kind of a compromise to make things simple. And um, again, I'm using 99% uh, scrap material, so I'm just using what I got laying around. I, this enclosure is watertight. Uh, this will only get plugged in when it's stationary and charging. So when you, in the winter time, you got to plug that in, you got to plug that in. And, and I'll make this nicer uh, so you don't have to open up the, the seat every time to plug it in. But just like a block heater for your car. Um, that And that get plugged in, and otherwise it won't charge. This will turn on if the temperature is above the set point, and in this case it is, okay to charge. And as soon as either one fall too cold, it'll turn off the, off the charger and on the heater. And the heater runs off of the wall power, so it's not draining batteries from the heating. And that's just going to be an electric blanket. Uh, I got a, uh, a heated pad down in there right now. Uh, and then, yeah, I'll figure out something with this as well. So, yeah, talked about that already. Now I'm starting to go around in circles. Uh, right, so, again, this solar uh, cart, I called it a solar cart. There's a slip up. I went to say this golf cart is kind of solar powered in the summertime. The solar panel is off right now. It's this half the frame. Uh, it's a really, it's kind of a, an older panel. It's, it's meant for going on roofs, uh, but it's been working great actually. It increases the range uh, of this cart in the summertime by like a good 25%. So that's like adding 25% more battery. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's been, it's been great, but the frame. Uh, the aluminum uh, frame to hold up the roof 
uh, wasn't strong enough to hold that weight uh, and all the vibration and shaking off road driving uh, and eventually cracked. So that's just fine. This, the timing was worked for me because I have to get the thing off of here to access this. Normally that, that uh, bucket sits on, on, on here uh, and then you can't really access any of this. So that's another opportunity I wanted to do to make this video. Uh, and yeah, so I've been talking long enough. I hope you enjoyed that fire hose of information. And this is kind of the thing I want to do for my YouTube channel. But, uh, but yeah, so this is the kind of thing I wanted to show it's possible. And, uh, for, for very little, you just got to be a little bit creative, uh, and got, and put some extra time into it and you can make some stuff out of garbage just like me. Uh, yeah, anyways, who's got the time for this? Anyways, yeah, so another story. Uh, that bald out piece of paper is the schematics for this, though I never lose them. They're going to stay in here. This gets buttoned down, and then I can add insulation to all this, but yeah. Thanks for watching. It's long enough of a video, uh, and yeah, stay fresh.